Howdy folks, welcome to your first CS128 Honors Lecture. My name is Neil, and in this lecture, I'm going to be formally introducing you guys to the Rust programming language. So we'll discuss a little bit more about how we're going to use Rust in this course, explore the Rust environment, and finally create your first Rust program. Hello CS128 Honors. Before we start, I'm just going to go over the results of Homework Zero really quickly. So it seems a lot of you guys had fun this summer. Uh, some of you were traveling, spending time with friends. One of you learned to drive a forklift. I'd be really interested to hear how that went and what your favorite programming languages are to work with. So some Java, a lot of Python, some Golang. One of you learned Haskell this summer, some C++, TypeScript, R, nice little mix there. Favorite pastas. So a split between spaghetti and penne and then a couple sort of stragglers in there, like Rotini, Tagliatelle, Calamarata, Farfalle, and a bunch more. And finally, uh, what are you guys looking forward to most in this course? So the final project, learning a new skill, and a whopping 15 of you said learning Rust. We always love to see that. Okay, so with all this talk about Rust, we should first formally introduce you guys to the concept. So what is Rust? Well, Rust is an iron oxide, uh, usually reddish brown, formed by uh, the mixture of iron and oxygen in the presence of water or air moisture. No? Okay. Well, Rust is actually a multi-paradigm systems programming language. Let's break that down a little bit. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, multi-paradigm. So there is this concept of programming paradigms, uh, categorizing programming languages based on their features. So um, different programming languages sort of have different um, forms of syntax, forms of patterns that you use to solve different types of problems. Um, some patterns are more useful in solving different types of uh, certain types of problems. Rust is multi-paradigm, which means that it supports multiple programming paradigms, and it doesn't restrict the programming to a single paradigm to solve uh, uh, any problem that you may have. So, you can use Rust in any paradigm and use the you know use the best paradigm to solve the task at hand. Um, you might hear that Rust is a functional programming language. So functional programming is one of the paradigms. Um, yes, that is true, but you can also use Rust in a bunch of other paradigms. Okay, systems programming. So systems programming aims to produce software that sort of serves as uh, some underlying software to other pieces of software and or uh, some software that's performance constrained. So video games, um, high frequency trading, whatever it may be, or both. And so Systems programming languages are designed to give the programmer uh, access to the underlying hardware for really, really good performance. So, and you'll see that Rust is a very, very fast programming language comparable to C. And uh, many, many of the uh, developers who use Rust in their careers will praise Rust for its performance. Okay, so how will we be learning Rust throughout the course? Uh, we will often refer to the Rust textbook throughout our lectures. You can just Google the Rust textbook. textbook. It's free online. Uh, you can also use this link. I, uh, I you know, recommend you follow along uh, if you'd like. Uh, you know, just use the link and we'll post uh, links to the chapters as we go along um, throughout the semester, but it is not, not required by any means. Just a resource for you to use in case you need help on homeworks, MPs, whatever it may be. Okay, so Rust should already be installed on your CS128 virtual machines. You can test this out with cargo uh, space dash capital V. This essentially checks the version that of cargo that you have installed. Um, you should see this sort of output cargo and then the version and some type of hash and uh, the date. Let us know if you have some issues uh, running Cargo-Capital-V, um, and we will help you get that set up. Okay, with that being said, what is Cargo? 
well, cargo or um, any sort of like large shipping containers or large containers that are sort of contain um, smaller boxes that you send across large distances. And um, no, is that is that too old? <laughs> cargo is Rust's build system and package manager. So let's break this out again. Uh, cargo compiles your Rust project so that you can execute it using um, you know, either running the executable that it produces or by using Cargo again to run the program. I should say technically Rust C is Rust's compiler. Cargo is just another layer of abstraction on top that manages your packages, handles all the metadata of your project, and uh, invokes Rust C for you. So you don't need to handle all the uh, linking to any type of library you may use. But that's sort of out of the scope of this pro uh, class. Cargo is also Rust's package manager. So um, modern programs depend on external packages and libraries. So rather than reinventing the wheel and developing everything from scratch, you can use a package to sort of uh, you know, run some code for you, do some task. So a package manager handles those packages, handles the version of those packages, um, and any dependencies that they might have. So Cargo is your sort of all-in-one um, you know, build system, package manager, you're going to be using Cargo throughout this semester. So like I said, we'll be using Cargo to compile and execute your code and download and manage packages for you, um, like in your final project. Okay, so let's go through the process of creating some Rust code from scratch. So first we'll create a new project, edit your code, compile it, and then run it. So I am in a VS Code workspace here. Um, I prefer to use VS Code. You can use whichever editor you prefer. Uh, there is this thing called a Rust Analyzer extension for VS Code, which is sort of um, helps correct your syntax and helps you out with any sort of missed semicolons or whatever it may be. So. If you have VS Code, I strongly recommend you to use Rust Analyzer. Anyways, that being said, the first uh, sort of command we're going to do is going to create a new Rust project for us. So that is the cargo new command. So cargo new and then the name of the project want. So hello world. And then you'll see a new folder, hello world, pop up in my workspace and it's auto-populated with all of the Rust files that we need. So there's a source folder with our main.rs. Main.rs is the sort of main file that gets run with their main function. Then you have your cargo.toml. This is the file that sort of defines the metadata of your project. And this is also where all the dependencies and uh, sort of extra packages you may need go. So you'll define the external packages and the version you want. We'll show you how to do all of this later down the road, but just to keep you sort of um, aware. Cargo.lock is automatically generated by Cargo, as you see here. Um, it is basically a manifest of all the packages and every single dependency that all of your dependencies need. Um, don't worry too much about it. <clears throat> Finally, target is where all of the compiled and built code goes you won't be really interacting with it much. Okay, so we're gonna cd into hello world. And then build our project. So we'll build this hello world app with cargo build. Here you go. Finally, cargo run to run it. And out it prints hello world. So let's see if we can make a change to this code. So say hello CS128 owners. Okay. And then go ahead and build that. Run it again. Nice. And so I also want to show you another command, cargo check. 
cargo check essentially checks whether your code is syntactically correct, whether it can be compiled, but it does not perform the compilation. This is useful in a handful of cases, especially when your project is large, you have a lot of dependencies, and you don't want to actually build your project, because uh, once your project gets bigger and bigger, Rust compile times get larger and larger. So to demonstrate that, let's just remove a semicolon there, run cargo check. Uh, this is a little bit of a tricky syntax here. So, or rather, tricky semantics from Rust. So we'll print that out twice and run this. There we go. So cargo check is saying we need to add a semicolon at the end of the first line. If you're wondering why um, it did not sort of air out on this last syntax line here or on the previous version of the program, it's because the last line of a function in Rust um, if there's no semicolon here, it's inferred that you're returning the result of that last line. So return println is equivalent to just leaving out the return. But that's just a fancy semantic for later down in the course. Okay, so you can use cargo check to check your code, uh, find any syntax errors, and the Rust compiler is surprisingly good at finding your issues and giving you the fix to whatever it may be. Obviously this is just a simple semicolon, but you will be surprised at what the Rust compiler can do. Okay, put that back. Okay, finally, there's this one last command, cargo clean. So cargo clean will remove all of the built um, executables and source code from your working directory. This is useful if you're working with a group and uh, you accidentally push the compiled code to the, you know, your Git repo. Um, cargo clean just sort of removes a target folder and cleans your project so you can build everything from scratch. If you're having some weird build errors that you don't really know how to fix and uh, cargo check isn't really helping you, try cargo clean um, and uh, rebuild. It's also good practice to run cargo clean sort of like once every uh, now and again, just to sort of you know refresh your build environment and um, remove any sort of unused build results. Okay, one final thing. I can use cargo run without saying cargo build, and cargo run will both compile my code and run it at the end. So um, just a neat little shortcut. Uh, you can use Cargo Run, and Cargo Run will build your project if you have not already done so. Okay. So, just to recap, Cargo New will create a new Rust project for you. Cargo Build will compile and build the code in your project. Cargo Run will build if uh, your project is not already built, and run the compiled code. Cargo check will check for syntax errors without compiling your code. And finally, cargo clean will clear the project of all compiled sources. So you'll have just the source code and no sort of executables or um, built sources. That's all folks. Just a short little intro lecture. The, we'll be going over the basics of Rust syntax in the next four lectures. So keep an eye out for lecture on Thursday. Have a good one.